just walk over Scott. And it's not, and you're still thinking, this is not about me at all. But you know, if it was me who touched Scott, and Scott's gonna get Larry. That's not what I, that's not, Scott doesn't want Larry. He want Jesus, you know, amen? You know? And so, Scott doesn't need any more me than the man on the moon, you know? Because if Scott was going to get something off of me, it'd probably be, you know, must, you know, some sorry something or other or whatever, you know. So we walk over and we make ourselves available. We make ourselves available, and we trust the Lord. And we say, Lord, I'm just trusting you because, you know, I'm being encouraged. The pastor's telling me, you know, that you like to work through your children, and I know I'm your child, and I want you to work through me. How many of you want God to work through you? Amen. Amen? <clears throat> We all do, don't we? How is God going to work through you when, if we just stay sitting, you know, how's God going to work through me if I never get out of my seat? You know, how's God going to work through me if I never get out of my seat on Monday? If I never get out of my seat on Tuesday? You know, if I never get out of my seat on Thursday, so to speak. Amen? I have a question along those lines. Uh, from a standpoint of serving, especially when you're serving on the sound or the other team, you're basically doing that. You're, you're standing, you're being quiet, you're not engaging, and it's very hard to switch gears from I'm serving, so I have to be on top of everything, especially if you're an usher, you gotta be watching everything so that in case something happens, you can you know, react, to I can be involved in being able to give to somebody the God that's in me because I'm so busy, I guess, squishing that so that I can serve. So how do I switch gears? How do I learn to, because that's all I find myself doing. Even now, I find myself looking around going, okay, this is where everybody is in case anybody needs something or something's going to happen. Or, or, or gosh, if Jennifer just suddenly stood up and started acting crazy and I had an extra her to the back of the room. You know, that's, that's what's in my mind because of what I've been, what I've been trained to do. Jennifer's about to spaz out. The question that Pat asked is the question of life. You know, because we're all called to, you know, we, most of us probably work. And we, you know, we're involved in all these things. We have responsibilities all the time. You know, whether it's, you, you know, your children or, like I said, a, a work issue. But we're called to walk and follow, you know, what we talked about last week. You know, what is it that God really wants of us? Spend time with us. To, to enjoy this journey. It's what, the main thing we talked about in here last week was that the, the number one thing God wants of us. You know, we see it in the garden. He was walking with Adam and Eve in the garden. And we see it in the greatest commandment in Jesus that it, when he said, love the Lord your God. And we see it reflected there that the number one thing that God wants of us is to walk through with us and enjoy together with us this journey that we call life. That's the number one thing. That's the greatest thing that God gets out of your presence here on planet Earth. Is that He's not interested in what you're going to become. He's not interested. I was talking to the Lord one day, and I was like, Lord, do you want me to start a church? Maybe it would have a thousand people in it. Would that fulfill your purpose for my life being on the earth? My 75 or 80 years or however long it's going to last. And I, I, you, you remember, I told you this last week. The Lord said, well, think about your son. What do you get out of his life? And I thought, well, you know, he does this and he does that and he does that. But all those things, not any of them really affected me personally. And it really came down to just one thing was left. And I, I told the Lord, I said, the only thing that really blesses me in his life in a real tangible way that changes my life is when he and I do something together. I mean, that really affects me. Otherwise, everything else he did, I'd still be just driving in the car talking to you just like I am now, whether he was in band or he was in choir or he was in, you know, made A's or B's or all these other things. But it's when he and I do something together, and the Lord spoke to me and said, that's how I feel about you. That's how I feel about you. And that's the way the Lord feels about you and, and you, Chris. And you, Rob. And, and you, Mark. And you, Kevin. That's how the Lord feels about you. He's not interested in what you do, what you become. Now, I'm interested in what my son does. I'm glad he's, he, you know, he's about to graduate. And all that stuff is great. But none of it, I'll, really, honestly, none of it compares to, you know, he can be away at college or away on his job and do it, accomplishing great things. But you know what I'd rather him do? I'd rather get to spend some time with them. 
And I'll drive hours to go see him, just to spend a little bit of time with him. And when I have to leave, it almost brings me to tears because I just can't stand. I miss him so much. 